Hello. Good morning. As you come in, go ahead and share this live stream. Invite somebody on. Thank you guys for joining me Friday. Thank you for joining. Thank you for coming in. While in route empowerment and those that are destiny travelers, if you're someone that wants to journey well in this life, I am positioning myself to be an encourager, a coach, an instructor that are that is assigned to empower you to live out the destiny that God has ordained for you to walk out before the foundations of the world. My name is Sherry Downs. For those of you that are new or those of you that are maybe finding me for the first time, we've been talking about how to manifest the will of God and um it, it has just been blessing me. I pray that it also has blessed you or is blessing you how to manifest the will of God. And today we're going to finish that topic up, how to manifest the will of God. I think sometimes often we um, experience the church culture to the degree that we become desensitized to the things of God. And truly, we're not seeing patterns of what it really looks like to walk with God in a very close and intimate way. And manifesting the will of God, we talked about on Wednesday, has a large part to do with you. Um, It has a large part to do with you and I laying down our will for the will of God. And when we get to that place where it's not our will, but his will be done, just as Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, he had a choice to make when he was facing um, the cross, when he was facing persecution, when he was facing his destiny defining moment, what he chose in that garden would set the course of events for history, but God knew he could trust him to come all the way through. So when Jesus was in the garden, he was grappling with choosing to lay down his life and finish this course. We see and get a picture into this time of being in agony and him having to yield himself to the will of the father, but he checked in with the father to find out if there was some other way that this plan, God's great vision could be changed. So he didn't have to experience what he was experiencing in his carnal flesh because it was a gruesome death. But nevertheless, he chose the will of the father. If you're joining me, as you are joining me, come in, say hello. Let me know where you are watching from. Thank you, Destiny Travelers, for joining me on Wednesdays and Fridays. If you are interested in any coaching or any uh, book products, you can go to my website at www.touchdownsenterprise.com. We're talking about how to manifest the will of God. Hi, uh, Cammy, Kim. (laughs) How to manifest the will of God. Type that in your comments. We shared just a little bit on on Wednesday, and hopefully those of you that are new, you were able to go back and watch that live. If you have not gone back to watch part one of how to manifest the will of God, you want to go back and watch part two, uh, part one, (laughs) so that you can understand the full scope of what we're talking about. Type that in the comments. How do I manifest the will of God? We don't want to be believers that are living beneath our privilege. We want to be those who overcome and those who actually live a victorious life in Christ. We don't want to live this life week after week and it's not working for us. So we want to be ones who overcome. Type that in the comments. I am an overcomer. 
When I ask you to type things in the comments, what I'm doing is activating your faith. I am giving you a chance to respond to the revelation and to the insight that I'm giving. I'm just not telling you to say to type things or uh, say things just for um, the fun of it or for my benefit. I want to activate your faith with the things that the Lord will have us share. So Father, we pray for those that will watch this live. We pray Father, for those that will watch the replay, Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us into all truth. I pray that those that listen are edified. I pray that those that need to hear this message would hear this message, Father. And I pray those that are ordained to share this message would share this message and be edified thereby. Destiny Travelers, how to manifest the will of God. So we have to know what is the will of God. And we talked about that on Wednesday. Go back and watch Wednesday's uh, live. So in manifesting the will of God, we also have to understand the kingdom of God. Type in the comments, the kingdom of God is God's rule and God's reign and God's government. The kingdom of God is God's rule, God's reign, and God's government. So when we're trying to manifest the will of God, the first thing that we have to establish in our lives is his kingdom. When Jesus came preaching and teaching the gospel, and when John came preparing the way for the Messiah, it was that the kingdom of God was moving into the hearts of men. How we lost territory in the garden when the insurrection came with Adam, Eve, and the serpent. When the insurrection in the garden manifested, we lost ground because sin now came into man and moved into the territory of humanity. So what God has done is through Christ Jesus, sending him as the second Adam to give us a restart. Type in the comments, all things are made new. When you enter into God's kingdom by way of Jesus Christ, you have a new start. It is like God is taking you out of the, 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 the life of Adam and placed you into the life of Jesus Christ. And hear me, this is a supernatural experience. This is why God is a supernatural experience. You cannot experience God with your intellect. You cannot experience God with your carnal senses. It has to be in the realm of the spirit. And you have to grab hold of these truths by faith. Type in the comments, I have faith for the supernatural. So when we are in Christ Jesus, we are no longer under Adam. It's like two, two beings, right? And when we started out in this life, we started out in Adam. But when we accept Jesus Christ, God takes us and links us to the second Adam through the spirit, which is Christ Jesus. And everything connected to Christ Jesus, we have access to. But here it is, we have to become um, ones that grow in our spirit, man, to be able to ex access everything the kingdom has for us. Type in the comments, I'm growing now. It's time for the body of Christ to expand. It is the time for sons and daughters to manifest in the earth, to, for sons and daughters to grow into their full potential, into their full maturity, to be able to really express, here it is, the ruling and reigning of the kingdom of God. So there is the kingdom of God is on the inside of you. But what we have to do, chastity, is we have to grow and expand in our spirit. We have to deaden the deeds of the flesh. We have to separate ourselves from the carnal world and live as foreigners, live as, as those that are in the world, but not of it. So 
Jesus told the disciples this when they asked about prayer and they wanted to be able to manifest the will of God like John's disciples were. John's disciples were getting results. John's disciples were seeing demons cast out. John's disciples were seeing things manifest. But Jesus' disciples were like, wait, how can we get those type of results? How can we manifest the kingdom of God in that way? And Jesus gave us a picture of what that looked like how to manifest the will of God. If you are one that you have been hungering for more, you've been hungering for the manifestation of the will of God, share this video. So thy kingdom come, Jesus said, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. He said, you are to pray father. You're to, supposed to encounter God in an intimate way, in a personal way. And because of this, the kingdom of God started moving in the hearts of people. The kingdom of God started empowering those that would choose Christ to be representatives and ambassadors and connected to God through Christ Jesus. So the kingdom come, where is the kingdom coming? in us. Thy will be done. How is the will being executed? Through me as it is in heaven. So there is a, 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 a statue of, there is a precedence in heaven that I need to then manifest on earth. Type in the comments, I will manifest in my life. I will manifest what is in heaven through me on the earth, thy kingdom come. Where is the kingdom coming? In me. Come on. Where is the will of God being executed? Through me. So what is the will of God? The will of God and the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Hear me. Come on. Type in the comments, I will manifest in my life, in my lifetime. I will manifest what is already in heaven, the principles of heaven, the principles and the statues, the will of God concerning me. I will overcome in this life to manifest the fullness of who I am called to be in the earth. So thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. Here it is in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so this is key. Manifesting the will of God is God's will is executed through his domain. When we will be ones who manifest the will of God, God's domain, God's rulership, where God rules must be in you. God should be able to tell you what to do with your money. God should be able to tell you what to do with your body. God should be able to tell you where you're supposed to work. God should be able to rule. How does God rule through you? How does God rule through your mouth, Shayla? How does God rule through your parenting? How does God rule through your job, your leadership, your authority? If you're a supervisor, if you're a wife, how is the kingdom ruling? How is the kingdom being executed? How is God's domain being expressed through you? So sometimes people want to scale a mountain before they've even dealt with the valley. We have to, in our own lives, let the kingdom of God rule through us on the ground level in order for us to ascend in leadership. In order for us to ascend in our respective callings, sometimes in the body of Christ, we want to be up here before we've even mastered down here. We want to ascend high places before we've dealt with our own flesh, before we've had the ability to have God's kingdom have governance. God's kingdom have dominion over our individual life. 
we aren't we aren't the best um communicators we aren't the best uh um we can't speak to people properly love isn't expressed between our neighbors we're not um uh, uh stewarding things well in our lives we're not stewarding our relationships well we in and out of relationships cutting uh um uh, uh, people of, we can't um, have a successful marriage. Our children hate us. That's not the kingdom. That is not how the kingdom should be expressed in your individual life. God wants us to overcome. God doesn't necessarily come into our lives to destroy everything. He comes to put things in proper alignment. He comes to put things in proper order as he originally intended it to be. Now, people do have free will, but the power of God, the power in the kingdom of God is so much larger. I always look at the life of Apostle Paul because I think he's just like one of the greatest. Uh, and I, when I get to heaven, I want to meet him. And so um, how God began to disrupt Apostle Paul's life and set him on his original course. To the, to the Jews of that day, it would have been impossible for unless they saw through the eyes of the kingdom. It would have been impossible for God to get Paul's attention because he was killing the saints. He was slaughtering people. Listen, God is not your husband, your wife, your children are not too big that the power of God and the kingdom of God cannot get their attention. God says, I look to and fro throughout the earth for an intercessor to stand in the gap where you will find a prayerful person. You will find the kingdom being established. If you are one that is not praying, the kingdom cannot be established. The disciple says, how do we get this thing to manifest in our lives, Shayla? How do we get these things to manifest in our children? How do I get the resources that the kingdom has for me? How do I get in alignment with God's original intent for me? How do I manifest the gifts? How do I manifest the healing? And Jesus said, pray for the kingdom to come. Pray for God's kingdom to be established in you so that his will can be done through you so that it's what is in heaven. You will begin to manifest it and see it on earth. Sickness is not in heaven. Healing is in heaven. Joy is in heaven. Peace is in heaven. Riches are in heaven. Come on. Revelation is in heaven. Your gifts, your callings, it's all in heaven. So when you become kingdom minded, you become one who has the recipe to manifest the will of God. Type in the comments, I'm kingdom minded. So God's will will be executed through you. God will love through you. Did you know that love is a spiritual warfare weapon? Did you know that love is a spiritual weapon against the enemy? Did you know that peace is a spiritual weapon against the enemy? Did you know that closing your mouth is a spiritual weapon? weapon against the enemy. So we want the king's domain. My God, we want the king's domain to be established in our lives. The ruler is the king. So what do I need to do? I need to understand and know what the king wants. My God, what the king wants is what the king gets. Jesus, when we look at natural kingdoms, and we'll go back to what we talked about on Wednesday. When we look at natural kingdoms, the king made the decrees. The king made the laws. The king established everything on in, within the kingdom. What the king said, people adhered to his words. If the king said he wanted water, water was right there. If the king said, go do this, it was done. So when we understand authority and when we understand the word of God is the king's words. Listen, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. When I become kingdom minded, I am living by what he said and what he's saying because he's just, he didn't stop talking. 
Jesus. He didn't stop talking when he wrote the Bible, when he had men inspired and carried away by the Holy Spirit to write the inspired gospel. He's still talking. Type in the comments, talk to me, God. So when we establish the kingdom, we are putting precedence on the king's words. What does the king want within the kingdom? What does the king want my children to become within the kingdom? What does the king want me to do with this check I just received? What is the king? If you are being blessed, go ahead. You are welcome to share this video. You're welcome to sow some stars. You're welcome to sow some likes and share this content. So he says this, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, okay, let me, let me, um, okay, yes, I want, I want to bring this part in. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless you repent, that is, here it is, listen to this, change your inner self, uh-oh, so when the kingdom comes, Isa, chastity, it changes the inner you. <laughs> Jesus, my God. Is this blessing you? Type, it's blessing me. If it's blessing you, share it. When the kingdom moves on the inside of you, it regenerates you. It changes the inner you. Change your inner self. And you can't do that without the power of God. Your old way of thinking, how you thought when you were in Adam is totally different, Cynthia, than how you're supposed to think when you're in, how you thought when you were in Adam is totally different than how you're supposed to think now that you're under Christ. Now that you have stepped out of death and moved into life through Christ Jesus to be able to be a son and a daughter of the most high God, you got to repent, change your way of thinking. And then you got to go in your heart, your inner place and change your um, live. It says live. And this is the amplified version. Live changed lives. Your life has to change and become like children, trusting, humble, and forgiving. You will never enter the kingdom of heaven except you become like this. You got to repent, change your way of thinking, change your inner self, uh, live a changed life and become trusting, humble and forgiving. See, a lot of people have trust issues because of what they experienced when they were under Adam. They haven't stepped into the kingdom to trust the father, to protect them, to trust the father, to deliver them out of danger, to love without fear, to trust and believe the best, hope for the best. They are still dealing with the endemic nature to the degree that they're like, mm, I don't trust people. I don't trust people. I don't trust. But when you're in the kingdom, you trust him. You trust the king to protect you. You trust the king to send angels to assist you. You trust the king to warn you of danger. You trust the king to lead you and guide you into all truth. So when we are ones, my God, to manifest the will of God, we have to have clean hands and a pure heart. Type that in the comments. I must have clean hands and a pure heart. To have clean hands means you have been cleansed in your experiences. You have been cleansed in what you're putting your hands to. Your hands work purely. Your hands work for the kingdom mandate. You are not in ungodly contact, uh, uh, connections and covenants. You're not making ungodly deals. You're not putting your hands to impure things. You have to have clean hands and a pure heart. Your heart has to be purified of ungodly motives. Mm. Jesus, your motives have to be pure. This is why you have to come to God, repent, change your way of thinking, change your inner self. And here, this is how we can measure ourselves. Are my motives pure? Are my intentions pure? Everything in the kingdom of God has to come from a pure heart and clean hands. 
My contracts can't be dirty. My covenants can't be dirty. Who I come into covenant with, who I shake hands with, what I put my hands to has to be pure, has to be clean, has to be innocent, has to have a purity on it that only God's will is being manifested through my heart and through the things that I put my hands to, what I am building, what I am working toward, it has to be pure. It has to have, uh, 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 be blameless. The scriptures tells us that we are to walk blameless before the Lord, meaning nobody can come and say you have impure motives because you did A, B, C, X, Y, Z. You're coming into covenant and contract with people for A, B, C, X, Y, Z. Now, we have to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit because he is the one that will be with us as we are executing as we are manifesting the will of God through us, it is the Holy Spirit who will work with us. Type it, type in the comments. You must have divine fellowship. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If this is good to you, type this is good. And if this is good to you, share it. So someone else can experience the goodness. <laughs> so we will have the Holy Spirit of promise. He said, Jesus said this, I am leaving you, but I'm not leaving you comfortless. I'm not leaving you, Kim, without somebody to help you do this thing. Just as I was with you, he will be with you. So the helper, the paracletes, the one that will assist us is, is the Holy Spirit. He will be the power that works in you both to will and to do of God's good pleasure. You're not just manifesting the kingdom by yourself because in yourself, you cannot please God. It is the Holy Spirit who helps you have faith. It is the Holy Spirit that gives you the desire to want to listen to this alive, the, the desire to want to go back and listen to the replay. It is the Holy Spirit that is drawing you to this message. It is the Holy Spirit that is igniting you on the inside. It is the Holy Spirit that is opening your revelation, your ability to comprehend, your ability to take in, your ability to understand the revelation that you're receiving. It is the Holy Spirit. So this same Holy Spirit, Carla, is going to manifest type in the comments i am ready to partner i am ready to partner he says i will be with you and i will be in you so the holy spirit moves among us mm, jesus the holy spirit not only moves in you individually but it he moves among us as christ followers we have a divine um <laughs> intercom system, you know, uh, uh, or, or should I say a divine wiring, <laughs> a divine wiring. When we, when we share in the divine life, when we share in the divine will of God, we have divine connections with all of those who share in the divine life. So when we're manifesting the will of God, we have a divine connectivity system where the Holy Spirit will tell somebody to go all the way to Chicago and stand on the corner of Madison and Clark. And at 11 o'clock, a lady in pink is going to pass by. And I want you to tell her this. The Holy Spirit will work in every believer to say, I have called uh, so-and-so to do a work and I want you to sow a thousand dollars into her project. I have called so-and-so ministry of the church of God, of Jesus Christ to do so-and-so for my kingdom. I want you to sow $20,000 into that project. This is the divine fellowship. The divine fellowship says, Sherry, I want you to get on Facebook and I want you to teach about being one to manifest how to manifest the will of God because I have people that need to hear this message. So the divine fellowship connects individuals for the divine purposes of God. And when we share in the divine fellowship, 
and yield ourselves. See, this can't happen if you first don't let the kingdom reign. If the kingdom cannot manifest through you and tell you how to parent, how to mother, how to be a wife, how to execute your authority as a boss, a supervisor, how what to do with your money, what to do with your time, where to work, what college to go to, what to if the Holy Ghost can't tell you that in your own life. We want him to be able to govern our own lives so that we are ready to be chosen by God to be ones who manifest in the earth. The sons and daughters need to manifest in this timing that we're in. The sons and daughters need to manifest the kingdom of God, the divine life, healings, miracles, signs, and wonders. This is what is with us when we are manifesting the will of God. So as we have clean hands, as we have pure hearts, this is what I want to say. Everything needs to be done and motivated by love. Our gifts need to be motivated by love. When we come to God as little children, the motivation of children is pure love. Children don't have anything to give you. Children don't have a, a way to repay you. Children can't repay you for you staying up hours on hours on hours when they're sick. Children can't give you a paycheck. It is motivated by love. It is motivated by love when you stay up with your children, when you give to your children, when you selfishly uh, clean the house, when you take care of sick kids, when you take your children from practice to practice and you give and you give it, all of it is motivated by love. So within the context of the kingdom of God, Alyssa, Everything that we do should be motivated and fueled, here it is, by love for the Father and love for the divine fellowship, love for the brothers and sisters. In Corinthians, it talks, it says, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I am only sounding, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom, here it is, all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am, scripture says you amount to nothing. It's nothing. It's not on God's radar. He's not counting it. It's not being accounted unto you as righteousness. If you're not fueled by love, if God, you working for the church, you giving, you prophesying, you feeding the poor, all of these things he says you're doing. If I give all my possessions to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Here it is. Love is patient. All of these gifts should be done out of patience. All of these gifts should be done out of kindness. All of these gifts should be done out of love. These gifts should not be envious of other gifts. These gifts should not be done in a boastful way. I did this. I did that. These gifts should not be done with pride. I'm on top. I am the top person. Nobody can take me down. That type of attitude. It does not dishonor others. Your gift doesn't dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. Your gifts are not done because you're seeking for self-glory, for your selfish motive. It is not easily angered. Your gifts are not going to cause you to be angry with people. You're not going to do things out of anger. It keeps no records of wrong. These gifts are not measuring your wrongness, but they're pulling out the rightness in you. They're pulling out the gold. They're advancing you and pushing you to be more like Christ. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always. So this expression of love is how we are to move in the kingdom of God. 
So when we have this motivation and when we know it is the Holy Spirit that is with us, working through us to manifest God's kingdom, to manifest God's will through us, we will be ones that can be trusted by God. We will be ones that God can trust with riches. We will be one that God can trust with souls. We will be ones that God can trust with influence. Now, here it is. We can do things in our own self because there are laws and principles that govern the world. And sometimes people mistake self-promotion, bringing yourself to a place of prominence. They mistake that for God's process and how God's re God readies a people. When we are manifesting the will of God, we are leaving people better than how we found them. God didn't promise that we would experience this life void of pain, void of trials, void of life's issues. In fact, he said, in this life, you will have trouble. You will have worries. You will have, he said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome them. And because he has overcome, we have the Holy Spirit of promise in us that helps us to overcome. Type in the comments, I will overcome. You have to know that God wants you to overcome every generational pattern, every generational choice, every generational problem and issue. What has plagued every marriage, you were supposed to overcome it. What has plagued every family member with every daughter, every son, every male in your family, your family is supposed to overcome. He says, I will be with you and I will be among you. So him being among us is him manifesting and moving among the believers. Him being in our midst to manifest God's sovereign will, God's will through us in the earth, that we will be sons and daughters, that the earth is groaning and the earth is moaning and expecting the sons and daughters of God to grow in their capacity so that they can manifest as a child of God, fully equipped and empowered to do what Jesus did. So it is the, it is God who worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure for it is God. It's God, Carla. It's God, Chastity. It's God, Cammy. It's God, Isa. It's God, Shayla. It's God, Alyssa, that's in you working. Type in the comments, I feel him working. I don't see, but I feel it. I don't see, but I feel my spirit stretching. I feel my faith has been increased. I feel the grace of God upon me. I feel the encouragement of God. I don't see it all the time, but I see a, a cloud the size of a man's hand. I see where this happened, but now this is happening. I see the little things. I see the manifestation of what I'm expecting. I see the cloud when I'm expecting the rain. I see the evidence of God's hand. I see my marriage changing. I see my children humbling. I see my children saying, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I see respect coming back to my house. I see my children asking about God now. I see my children wondering about God now. I see God changing things. I see him shifting the narrative. I see greater upon me. I feel the healing power of God. I feel the deliverance of God where I didn't understand this. Now my comprehension has opened open up and the Holy Spirit has given me revelation knowledge uh, concerning who I am and what I am supposed to do and who I am supposed to run with in order to manifest the will of God. And all of this is accomplished, Cynthia, through the Holy Spirit.
spirit. We have to learn how to have fellowship with him. We have to learn how to have partnership with him. We have to learn to become houses of God's glory. What does this mean? We are houses that manifest the expression of God. The glory of God is simply this, the manifest presence of God, the manifestation of God working. The glory of God is just him manifesting. The glory of God is just him manifesting love manifesting the works, manifesting what is in heaven on earth. The glory of God wants to sit upon you. The glory of God wants to reign in you. The glory of God wants to manifest through you. He wants to manifest the pure love that we are supposed to have for the brethren. He wants to manifest the love that you are had to have one from, for another in fellowship. He wants to manifest pure love in your family, in your home, in your church, in your business, in your career. He wants to manifest his glory through you. So how do we get the glory of God to manifest? We let the kingdom reign through us. We have pure motives. Now, your motives can't be impure. Your motives can't be selfish. Your motives can't be out of jealousy. Your motives can't be out of pride. Your motives can't be out of envy. Your motives can't be out of boastfulness. I want this so I can boast. I want to be this so I can be on top. I want to be this so people will know my name. Your motives have to be fueled by love. Love. And love does what God says. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my word. If you love me, do what I say. So when he's telling you to sow a seed, do what he says. When he's telling you to write the book, just do what he says. When he tells you to take time off work and spend time with your husband, spend time with your kid, do what he says. Whatever he says do, Mary says, just do it. Type in the comments, I'm just doing it. When he speaks, just obey. He's looking at you. He's surveying your life to see if you will be one to just do what he says. He's mindful of you. He's watching you. He's looking at your life to see how well you respond to life challenges. Do you cast those cares on him? Do you respond out of the kingdom? Do you respond out of who he is in your life? Just do it. Just give. Just write. Just start the podcast. Start the blog. Start the Bible study. Start encouraging. Start the coaching. Start the mentoring. Just do it. Whatever he says do. Just be found doing it. We don't want to be like Simon the sorcerer who when he saw how the Holy Spirit was manifesting, how the Holy Spirit was manifesting, he wanted to take the Holy Spirit for himself. His motive was to take the Holy Spirit. Let, let me go ahead and read it for you. Acts chapter 8, 18 through 24. Here it is. Stay with me. When Simon saw that the spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands. He offered the money and said, give me also this ability so that everyone of whom I lay my hands may receive, here it is, the Holy Spirit. Peter answered, may your money perish with you because you thought, here it is, you could buy the gift of God with money. You may have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I can see that you are full of bitter jealousy and are held captive by sin. You're missing the mark, Simon, he says. He says, 
You're held captive by jealousy. You're jealous that we can do a work that you cannot do. Remember, he was Simon the sorcerer. So he worked magic. So even as he became a Christ follower, his motives wasn't still pure. His hands were still dirty. His intentions didn't change. He had to be fully transformed. His motives had to become pure. He couldn't carry that same mentality of if I do this, I'll have clout. If I buy this, if I get this uh, 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 gift that they have. Listen, let me tell you, in manifesting the will of God, it comes from Jesus Christ. It comes out of Jesus Christ to you. You don't get it and try to extract it just because you see it. And that's what we're having. We're having a lot of people see others do things. And they're saying, if I get that for myself, if I write that book, if I do that conference, if I start that blog, if I do this, no, it's going to come out of Jesus Christ, the will of God. Christ is going to draw you. The Holy Spirit is going to draw you. He will be the one to bring you into it. He will be the one. I, um, uh, somebody said, God told me to join with you. God told me to come serve you. It is God who draws people. It is God that says you need to sit under this person. They have what you need. You need to follow their ministry. I want you to serve this ministry. I want you to be connected to this church. I want you to start doing this. It is God and he will confirm his word. Type in the comments. Look for the confirmation. God speaks out of two and three witnesses. The Bible says this, out of two and three witnesses, let every word be established. So when God wants to bring you into something, you need to bring that thing you heard before God and wait for the confirmation. Wait for the manifestation. Look for the confirmations. Look for the leadership. Look for God to establish it out of two and three witnesses. Out of the mouth of two and three witnesses, let every word be established. So when God is bringing us into something, there will be confirmations. There will be witnesses that says you're supposed to do this. You'll hear this thing several times. It may be something that is pre Now, here it is. The enemy will also do this as well. So you need to look for more of than the confirmation, but this is also a, uh, a measuring stick. Type in the comments, I'm ready now. So when we begin to be ones that manifest the will of God, here it is. This is the last thing I'm going to say. And then I, I guess I can take some, some questions. If you guys have questions, begin to put those in the chat and I'll take just a few minutes to answer any questions. Um, if we'll be one to manifest the will of God, we can't be afraid to work. Jesus. Jesus, come on. We can't be afraid to work. We can't be afraid to work. We can't be afraid to work. We see in the kingdom of God, anybody that God chose, when God called the disciples, when God said, come follow me and I'll make you. They were doing things, Shayla. They were in the process of working. They weren't just sitting. They were working. They were diligently working. They were great at what they did. Jesus saw something in their lives. He said, come follow me and I'll make you this. Because you already have the recipe and you already understand what it is to work. You already understand hard work. Listen, when God calls you and God places you, when God calls you and God chooses you, because those are two separate events and you want to pre-order my book while en route to destiny, because I talk about the two separate events of the calling and the choosing. They are different. Type in the comments, the called and the chosen. You want to go to my website and pre-order while en route to destiny. I talk about being called of God and being chosen by God, two totally different events. And a lot of people have heard the calling, but they haven't been chosen. Oh God. The Lord broke that down to me so clearly in the life of Jesus Christ. And I began to say, oh Jesus, help us. The call and the chosen, to be called and to be chosen, two separate events. You can be called, but not chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. 
The scriptures tells us that plain and clear, and we see it in the life of Jesus Christ. We see where he was called, but he still had to go th through the process to be chosen by the father. And I point that out in my new book, pre-order it while en route to destiny. So don't be afraid of hard work. Don't be afraid to put your hands to, to things. Don't be afraid to follow God. We got to follow him in order for him to make us. And sometimes the following God is pure, purely out of love. You may not see the uh, benefits right away. You might not see the results, but you're shifting things in the realm of the spirit. In the spirit, things change before they change in earth. We have to change things up and rearrange things in the spirit before they manifest on earth. And a lot of times people don't understand this by faith. They don't understand that they are moving by faith, motivated by love. They are moving by the words of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So when I'm moving by God's word, when God is guiding me, when God is giving me a blueprint, when God is telling me to love, when God is telling me to be kind, when God is telling me to change my inner self, when God is, he is changing things about you in the realm of the spirit. In the realm of the spirit, you are moving out of the endemic nature and stepping into the um. Uh, nature of Christ, having the mind of Christ, having the nature. What is the, the, the spirit of Christ is the nature of Christ. The, the spirit is a nature of a thing. The spirit of a thing is the nature of a thing. The spirit of witchcraft is the nature of witchcraft. The spirit of love is the nature of love, the natural inclination. Evil has a nature and uh, the kingdom of God has a nature. So you have to know and discern the nature of things. What are people naturally inclined to? Do you naturally respond out of love? Do you naturally respond out of patience? Do you naturally respond out of peace? Do you naturally respond out of self-control? What is the nature that you carry? Do you carry the kingdom? The kingdom is the nature of Christ. The kingdom is the nature of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. How do we know the Holy Spirit is in you? We will see the fruit, the evidence that the Holy Spirit's nature is in you. Manifesting the will of God. Anybody got any questions, thoughts, comments? I know I taught it really thoroughly as the Holy Spirit began to inspire me, but um. Any thoughts, questions, comments? Anybody have a question about how to manifest the will of God? How to manifest the will of God? How do we manifest this thing? How do we get it in our lives? How? And, and listen, Shayla, it's going to happen day by day. You can't rush it. Because remember, when we're changing things spiritually, it takes time to manifest in the earth realm. Earth has to catch up with what heaven has already done. Heaven is outside of time. Earth is in time. So earth has to catch up with where heaven is. Oh, the scripture I read from Acts. Uh, Philippians 2 and 13, Matthew 28 and 20. Acts 8 and 18, Philippians 2 and 13, Matthew 28 and 20. Acts 8, 18 through 24. So when we're manifesting God's will, we're moving by faith. Don't be discouraged by the time it takes. And I think a lot of people fall into this trap where they're thinking that, oh, I did it today. It's just going to happen tomorrow. It's kind of like working out. <laughs> when you're working out and trying to change your body, when you're working out and trying to change things in your body, just because you work out today, even though that was hard work, you ain't going to see those results tomorrow. It's going to take constant, consistently doing it over time for you to start seeing that change. Look, I, I, I'm, 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 I've been starting to work out and I'm lifting weights, Shayla. And I've never been this person. So the Holy Spirit is like really changing me 
and giving me these desires. And as I'm working out, I go and I look at myself in the mirror and that role ain't changed. Listen, listen, listen. Are you hearing me? The role hasn't changed, right? The stomach hasn't shrank. But over time, as I keep being consistent, diligent, and discipline myself in every area, I'll start to see the thing change. Now, how does this translate in the spirit? I just don't give today and expect the harvest tomorrow. I just don't plant a seed of love today and expect the harvest tomorrow. Expect somebody to change today because of what I did yesterday. No. I'm going to plant this seed today and I'm going to keep planting them. I'm going to keep being kind. I'm going to keep sowing kindness. So that person over time will start to see, man, she keep being kind to me, even though I was this way. And I'm going to eventually re re reap that harvest. Be diligent, be disciplined, be consistent in the kingdom of God. Keep planting the seeds of love. Don't get weary in well-doing. The scripture says, in due season, we shall reap if we do not faint. That's the kingdom. Remember, you're changing things in the spirit realm before they manifest on earth. If you are intercessor, change things in the realm of the spirit first so that things can begin to change in earth. You got to change your children's heart in the realm of the spirit. What does that mean? That means I'm dismantling the demonic influences that have plagued my children and have caused them to fall into sin and all sorts of things. I am dismantling those things in the spirit. I am breaking legal ground and legal rights. I am uh, severing them from the judgment that has been upon my blood line, Jesus. I'm doing that first. And as I do that, and as I, as the intercessor delivers the will of God, speaks the will of God to them, things will begin to shift in the natural. But I have to have that patience. And the Holy Spirit gives us that too. He's so good that everything, God is so good and grand that everything that he wants to manifest through us, he literally does it for us. <laughs> he does it for us when we partner. All right. So if you're interested in coaching or mentoring, group coaching, go to my website. If you're interested in purchasing books, pre-ordering my next book, While en Route to Destiny. If you are a destiny traveler that you want to fulfill the mandate that is on your life, you want to live this. If you have a calling that God has placed on your life and you feel like you're called to more, pre-order While en Route to Destiny. Destiny, fulfilling the divine destiny on your life. You want to be one that can overcome and manifest in this life. But you got to let the kingdom rule in you. Let the kingdom rule in you. Type in the comments. It's on now. It's on now. I have this knowledge. The knowledge transfer that has happened, the Holy Spirit has opened up my mind. The seeds have been planted. It's on now. I know now. I know how to do it now. I know how to make it happen. Oh, watch out world. Here I come. Watch out devil. I'm about to manifest. Watch out enemy. I'm about to wreak havoc on your kingdom. I'm about to get it all. I'm about to access, access everything that God had for me. It's on now. I know how now. I know how to make this thing happen. I know how to look onto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. I know how to get the kingdom. It's going to reign in me first. I'm going to have governance and rulership over me first. And God's going to lift me up to the degree that I have influence to help others. That's what it's about. Because we share in the divine life. And we have divine fellowship. If this bless you, consider sowing a seed at touchdownsministries at gmail.com by Zell. Consider sowing a seed at sdowns2911 at gmail.com by PayPal. Consider sowing a seed at dollar sign, the number four purpose coach. Everything that you sow, if you are inspired by God, sow the seed helps me to accomplish this and fulfill this mandate for the kingdom advancement. 
I am assigned by God and I'm doing it as I follow Christ. Watch out. Here I come. Thank you, Destiny Travelers, for joining me while en route to purpose, to your destiny, to success, to advancing. I love you with the love of the Lord. May you be empowered. May you be inspired. And may you be equipped for every good work. Have a wonderful Friday. Be blessed.